Quest Warrior, even piled in Band Out for Garibor and Secret Hunter and even Lock. What oh, I've seen that deck fail so many times. It's obviously not as powerful as it used to be, but Surrender, you know, being himself, gonna be doing pretty well. So let's get into game at number one, Garibor versus Surrender. It's gonna be the Hunter versus the Druid. Yeah, Malagos Druid. We were just having quite a few conversations about this backstage. Is it good? Is it not good? Some people were saying, oh yeah, look at Akumaker. He went um, pretty badly with it. Although Surrender is 2-0 right now. And um, Enrico as well is 2-0 with it. So we can't really say with such a small sample size, but I feel like not a lot of it has been seen these days. Right Post nerf, but if Surrender believes in it, it's got to have some potential. Yeah, it'll be interesting matchup here. Right? general you know is it going to be strong enough to just repel hunter because hunter's in probably the strongest spot it's been in for a very long time i feel like it has the potential when the start is something like this where the hunter has missed its turn one has potentially a weak turn two of just playing a secret although i guess garbar would rather coin out um animal oh. companion because he can still play master's call next turn and then surrender can get essentially the normal wild growth which is like a wild growth before your opponent has done anything pre-nerf wild growth right there yep. and uh, he still has branching pass to be a draw engine and as he gains armor he gets a really strong removal with this and well you can curve into ui eventually this just does look like what druid usually used to do it really does yeah if you just close your eyes a little bit maybe just uh just didn't quite look at the number at the top of, of wild growth there uh, you know, you might get some terrified mm -hmm. memories of the old days, but Garibor taking it a little bit slowly, just having the secret, uh, the freezing trap live on the turn two, going into the animal companion. And this curves a little bit more naturally throughout the rest of the hand that Garibor has. And the thing with hunters right now is because of Master's Call, they can take their gameplay a little bit slower because they won't just run out of gas by turn six or seven as it used to be. Mm -hmm. They can keep going and keep going. And with cards like the Master's Cards I mentioned and Dio Frenzy, the power never really fades away, right? You know, it's you true. keep putting out some big pressure minions and Druid might just struggle a little bit. It's true. And Surrender now is thinking about whether he wants to use branching paths for one draw and possibly one tick of armor because he definitely wants armor to pick up the Spellstone buff to remove Misha. Instead, he goes for Ferocious Hell. And I think this is because he probably wants to use branching paths for more draw going into the following turns. He has nothing to do. He'd double Moonfire. He'd ideally like to draw into something like Nourish to just get into the ultimate infestation faster. But this Tundra Rhino is quite a bit... Never mind. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was just about to join you and say the Tundra Rhino, especially after seeing that turn of the buff and the Spellstone, is going to be really powerful because Dire Frenzy on Tundra Rhino, for example, is one of the most powerful beasts in the deck you can do it on. But now with this swipe draw perfectly timed, they're you know, fortunate for Surrender that you can clear this off. And suddenly, again, you know, both players don't really have the best hands or most immediately impactful hands. But this is where I think we might see Master's Call just to get something going. Yeah, it's time, I think, for him to pull the trigger and get something more done. And we don't know a whole lot about Garibor, uh, just to emphasize the contrast between these two players, where Garibor came in through the Challenger Cup, I do believe, where a Surrender has been on the world stage. He has been very familiar to many players and has a lot of fans. So um, it could be kind of an underdog story going into this, although we can't underestimate Garibor. He's already gone 2-0 in a very stacked field. Yeah, and, and just a, a little bit more background. This is, uh, of course, Garibor's first playoffs appearance. And most importantly as well, almost all of his points have, have come from ladder. Mm. He used to qualify. So he hasn't been jamming these tour stops. He's not been traveling around. He's just been at home getting it done on the ladder. And this is his first and you know maybe even last chance as this is the last playoffs of this season to get the job done. Right, and if we've learned anything from the previous playoffs, it's not to underestimate these Challenger Cup players because a lot of them have been putting out good performances. So Surrender with kind of an awkward draw here. This is still the old problem of Malagos Druid, which is like, I kind of want to draw with Branching Pass so I can get more ramp. But if you draw and whiff on two heavy things or unplayable things, then your UI becomes even more awkward when you get it. But that's a Nourish. It is definitely an unplayable Nourish. And Surrender, as soon as he saw the Nourish, was just stopped and was like, right, as you were talking about, what's worth more right now? Because Surrender can just Nourish next turn into the UI which will get him there. But then he has also another Let's weak see. turn the turn after. So even if he gains armor, is he just going to be beaten up this turn? I'm a little bit surprised that Gabador went for the 
Uh, Garibor, sorry, went for the Dire Frenzy on the Mole there, but I guess with Master's Call as a follow-up, you're reasonably likely to draw another one drop. It's true, he was reaching for the Master's Call first, but then I understand the line of play, and it's really, really important Let's to see. not give the Druid any time. Oh, sure. Because the second that you don't put anything on the board, the Druid is free to take a turn of ramp, and then they're suddenly doing all these extremely powerful things, and you didn't punish them while you had the time, so I like the the line from Garibor and Surrender. Taking the armor here, completely reasonable. He will float one mana on the ramp with the Nourish, but I think it's totally fine because he still has this Arcane Tyrant. Let's see what Master's Call gives Garibor. I didn't even catch if that was a buffed one or not. Me neither. The Crackling Raids Ooh, nice. those are mm. awful though. I not... guess Untargetable's not too bad because realistically, how does Surrender ever kill it for the rest of the he game? He doesn't, most likely. Or like Malagos swipe some. Wait, well, even the swipe to face with Malagos right. just kills five to the minions, so. Um... Yeah, I think I'll remember in here. Sorry, that would have killed it. Deal six. I'm already forgetting how Malagos <laughs> Druid works. It's been that long. But yeah, I think the membrane makes a lot of sense. As for Poisonous, um, is there a Lich King in the list? There is not, so no you're not really looking to be able to push through a wall on turn 8 for Surrender, so I think that the untargetable just... Oh. What do we know? Um, I will say, like, the, for me, the Poisonous is planning for, like, one very specific thing to happen, whereas I feel untargetable means that it's safe versus Spellstone swipes, and so on, so on. So, I don't know, we'll see how it works out, but that is a pretty threatening board. Garibor, and as I said earlier, with the Nourish, Surrender's turn this turn was, although good getting to UI, it's still one weak turn, and there's a lot of damage on the board for Garibor here. Yeah, I'm thinking, if not um, one big threat for maybe Garibor was thinking, maybe Let's I have at see. least one minion that can one-shot a Spreading Plague, even though Plague on this board doesn't seem very strong at all, so right. I think I still would have leaned towards the untargetable there. In any case, Surrender is in a pretty awkward spot because the four sixes don't line up very well with the UI. Of course, Surrender has the Moonfires to shore up that last bit of damage, but he already used one swipe. He's gonna use a Moonfire this turn, it looks like. And so his damage output with Malagos is limited later on. Yeah, he's gonna be slightly limited. He does have the Alexstrasza already though, so he knows that he can just put Garibald down to 15 as and when. But yeah, it's, it's tough, right? Because in this matchup specifically, I don't feel like, as the Druid, you can just use these Moonfires, these Spellstones, very, and maybe even the Swipes very mm -hmm. freely and be like, oh, it's okay. If I clear their board, they're only drawing one card a turn, so they just will never actually kill me as opposed to me having to kill them. Mm -hmm. And it won't really work because on top of all this, we can see that the Zul'jin's already in hand. There's obviously Rexar because if you're building a Hunter without Rexar, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. So th there was, Garibald can go really heavy into the late game right now and still provide threat after threat where Surrender kind of just has to hope this UI gets something done. And I get what you mean, especially because you feel less comfortable putting down Alex Straza and then hoping that your remaining burst gets there because once Rexar comes down, there's suddenly the threat of Lifesteal Beasts being built and then suddenly they're just never in range. Although Surrender is in a position where he can't afford to worry about things like that so far in the future when he's so far behind on board. The only thing he has going for him, aside from a good UI next turn, is that he has a pretty high health total, so he will have time to work, and Garbor also doesn't have his Rexor just yet. What's kind of funny as well is because Zul'jin's already there, even playing Zul'jin into maybe Rexar soon mm -hmm. is a plus 10 health gain for oh the Hunter. Gosh, yeah. So you actually, you know, gain so much armor and you don't, you normally play Zul'jin in most builds of Hunter to then just play Rexar on top of it. So you're not even really losing out. Let's see. I do wonder if Surrender may just have to consider actually going Alex Straza this turn to try and set Ooh. up for UI. I, I don't know. It's a tough one. Because if you UI now, then Alex Straza just gets worse and worse and worse. Right. Surrender there with a pretty choice ordering on the trade because he had not tested for Freezing Trap yet. He knows that if he plays UI this turn, then the Arcane Tyrant becomes free anyway, despite it being frozen back. Although now that the Venom Strike Trap was trap was procced. Now Surrender has to think about which UI target he wants to use it on. I really don't think this is the proper board for an Alexstrasza. Yeah. This is just getting worse. Surrender just going for the 
the most threatening minion in terms of damage that he can kill. He couldn't kill off the mole with poison, so um, instead he's just going for the 4-4. Four, four. There's also the consideration if he drew his Innervate, he could have Innervated out the Spellstone to then deal with the 2-3, but I mean, in the real world, there's still another poisonous minion to deal with, so it doesn't seem like even the best outcome would have been that great for Surrender here. What's going to be funny to me is it's going to be one of the few times in history that Surrender may double naturalize and actually cause a hunter to overdraw. Because, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. so cheap, and if it, once Surrender's removed this set of minions, at least it removes the um, sorry, the incoming lethal potential, especially with this hyena on the board. So it's just going to be funny because we just might see a hunter overdraw, which just almost never happens outside of uh, Hawazi. Yeah, I mean, usually you feel awful about having to naturalize because, oh, they're just going to draw into their bear sharks or something. But yeah, nowadays, Hunter just has a fuller hand than usual. And Surrender has so many targets he wants to deal with. At least the Spellstone can be used on the Hyena as long as it's done Let's first. See. This actually isn't so bad for Surrender now. I actually for, just forgot Malfiorin was a card because mm -hmm. we've just not seen it in it's true. Truth for a while now. Yeah. But with Malfiorin, with the Innovate, with Double Naturalize, Wrath and the Spellstone, you can actually just get a lot done here in terms of, okay, Let's I'll remove see. most of this board and put up two taunts or poison if you feel like it, gain the armor and have a buffed hero power as well. So Yeah, the poison is particularly interesting here. Wow. Alex plus Spellstone this turn. Oh, going for Naturalize instead. Yeah, I think even both these Naturalizes might have to be played. Yeah. Because you want you want Garibor, or Surrender wants Garibor, should I say, to actually have to think about dealing with this Alex Straza. Technically, he only needs one more damage outside of it, but I think Surrender expects this to still be cleared, in which case he's happy because his opponent just... Oh, oh my goodness, <laughs> that is a huge overdraw. Now this 15 damage outside of the armor gain from Zildjian is permanent. I mean, 15 health rather. Yeah. And that means that <laughs> Surrender with a Malagos draw, he still has one swipe left. The Moonfire will deal six. So oh, if he could piece together the Florist, it could just be still an OTK. <laughs> it really could. This is kind of nutty. The one time Hunter overdraws, it's into Rex. Now that just cracks me up. Still still a lot of pressure though and a lot of damage. And with the way Hunter's built right now is you know, there's still so much that Garibald can do. We can see another Dire Frenzy that could potentially land on one of these minions next turn. Not only to shuffle the bigger minions in, but people often forget it's, it's plus three attack. Yeah. It's just more damage. I think Surrender consciously chose that to be a double naturalized turn, even though he could have used Spellstone to specifically get an overdraw and was rewarded for that. Now he still has Malfurion into Spellstone to clear off the uh, scavenging hyena. He has wrath to get rid of the 3-3. Three, three. And this is still a consideration for Poisonous on this turn because especially since you saw Rexar over overdrawn, like how is the hunter gonna deal with two um poisonous outside of like flanking strike and something? Yeah. Spreading plague always looks yeah, nice against about. Hunter, but the board is a little bit too big. Yeah, it could get to the point where the Hyena just is not killable by Spellstone anymore, in which case Surrender is very, very afraid because he has used both Naturalize. So I'm definitely looking at Malfurion here. Uh, Surrender also has to consider how much time he has to get to the Malagos um, being able to do an OTK because if the Twig and the Dream Paddle are near the bottom, even if he draws Malagos quickly, it might not be able to get everything done in a single turn. Right. I mean, there's a very real chance that with Malfurion, if you Malfurion and go into the Spellstone on the Hyena, you could consider start pushing damage to face with that hero power because, right, yeah. as you mentioned, with Rexar gone and some of the secrets already been played, Hunter's got very little game at stopping you dealing damage. Surrender is going with the exact play we mentioned. Garibor, with the Zul'jin, at least will be able to... I'm not sure if it's this turn that you play it. Well, with the Spellstone, it's nice to maybe hold on to it for a bit longer because you can then uh, refill a board right. after these um, spiders have traded off. Yeah, I think maybe with that Spellstone draw, the secrets in Spellstone right. just got mm -hmm. better. But if there was no Spellstone and it was just whatever, then 
I'd lean towards Zuljin because you're still dealing two damage a turn with the hero power, but also these secrets could potentially do nothing because in some worlds surrender doesn't have to proc them until yeah. you can win. So you you know you're just playing secrets and then nothing happens. Carabao going for the Zuljin though. Puts himself up to twenty. And these dire frenzies get played again and this is so sick. Although that just doesn't stack. Drop. That doesn't stack, does it? it no, doesn't. but <laughs> the damage is scary. Surrender looks very stressed out by this. Luckily for him, the flanking doesn't land onto those uh, spiders, but he still has to contend with a refill of secrets. Even just the one freezing is quite awkward for Surrender here, the other being Venom Strike Trap. That Master's Call coming from Zul'jin, just getting the use again, because that's just another Dire Mole on the board. Imagine imagine telling this story. Yeah, first, you know, first game on stream of playoffs. What did you lose to game one? <laughs> dire moles. You know, how? Oh, did they just have like, you know, turn one, turn two, dire mole? No, it was turn 10, dire mole. And I lost because of it. It's insane. Fair enough. And it looks like we're going to see a play that was very much well explained in the clips between some of the matches, which is uh, spreading plague into branching paths. Yeah, I wonder if that... Hmm. How else does he survive? And he has to go for attack, right? Otherwise, the problem just compounds. Yeah, it probably has to. Oh, going for Wrath instead? Wrath and Moonfire onto this, then he can remove the 7-9 and he can armor up. Although it feels so bad to leave the Poisonous up. He could just face tank it, but then he's dead to kill command and hero power. But he's already seen one, though, right? Have we seen one kill command, I think? I think we have, yeah. Let's do it. Brave Surrender. I love casting Surrender mainly because of his camera as well, because <laughs> Surrender just is so emotive. He feels all of the emotions, but no matter what, still smiles. He's just a happy guy. I don't think I'd be happy in this situation, Raven. Look, it's still Druid, okay? <laughs> Things can happen. Fair enough. So Garibor with the Animal Companion draw. Uh, very convenient to land Leoc because that would yep. make the trades very easily. Win Fury on this would be insane. I don't want to keep calling out the best outcomes for Surrender's sake, but... So yeah, if you just don't like Surrender, just say so. <laughs> okay, these are some of the... No, well, not that great. I guess Divine Shield... Justice. Yeah. It's going to be funny. I kind of just want Garibor to just put Dire Frenzy on a mole again. Just, to, <laughs> just so we know, the deck is just almost full of crazy big diamond walls. It'd be so funny. I mean, there's a reason why people lauded it, even as just a one mana one three. Yep. Finally, living up to the true potential. Final form of diamond wall is just a seven nine. I wonder if it's best to just preload it onto the four two. Yeah, I mean, Leok is always going to be a powerful draw here. Also, it just synergizes with the other Dire Moles to get through the plague, I guess. That is true. Yeah. I just wanted to, I, I'm always so tempted to go Raze Mar on that. Dream Pal, not really going to get much done here. <laughs> not I think Surrender's going to have to go dig in. It was even tempting from Garibor's perspective, I think, to maybe just ping the face because Surrender is so low. But, I mean, he recognizes that Surrender has used nearly all of his removal, but still has a bit of armor gain left. So it's right. more valuable for him to My load onto the board. Plagued. And I don't know what Surrender can draw outside of second spreading, spreading plague to give him more time here. Both Spellstone and both Naturalize gone by my count. Yeah, Moonfires are gone too as well. So even, even like Maligo's Moonfire 2 minions, right? You know, to just kill them off is is is, is not going to happen. And I think this is one of the problems that Surrender's had in this game overall. And it's, it's a problem that, guess what Maligo does have is, well, if Mali's at the bottom of your deck, you can just get ran over because there were times when Surrender could have just maybe dropped Maligos and double Moonfired if he had access to Mali. And then things could have got you know, a little bit funky because then you have to trade this flu. That potentially makes it cheaper. But not meant to be. Yeah, I do want to say that this game is probably in the books already, so I'm looking at the rest of Surrender's lineup, and it seems like this Hunter was going to get a win at some point, I think, uh, if not against this Malagos Druid, against the Quest Rogue. Is the, 
it's the overall big question mark I have, not only in this matchup, but, but in this tournament, is I feel like everyone's lent one way or the other in, mm -hmm. in general. It's either all aggro or all sort of combo slash control. Mm -hmm. And and I feel like so much of the tournament is like, who you whose lineup do you run into? And the big trick is when you can get wins against unfavored lineups. Ah, yeah. you. The second you do that, then you're just likely to just get edge across just that little bit more to be able to make it into the top cut. And that's a, the, another Just like LHS. Layout. Yeah. In a larger scale. <laughs> yes, Swiss LHS. A Swiss of Conquest is just a large LHS. <sighs> my god, that Leoc. Yeah, that is exactly the right expression. And by my count, Garibor is currently one off. Uh, sorry. Well, yeah, one off, right? Uh, surrender is at 15, including the hero power. So, I mean, Garibor can just do whatever he likes at this position. Surrender doesn't have the time to do any powerful things with Malagos. He didn't get the, the twig early enough. He couldn't land Dream Pedal onto Malagos. Yeah, this definitely looks like, you know, Surrender's Druid is just the old timer coming back thinking they can make it. And it's the, the, the past their time now. <laughs> you need to, you know, live up to the namesake there and uh, surrender that game over to Garibar. As that is a, you know, even just one game from the differences of these placing to its finishing point very quick. And now we have a matchup which has been in the game for ages. Even Locke versus Malagos Druid. And even before the nerfs, people were on the fence about who's actually favored here. I lean towards the Malagos Druid just because they had that burst potential. Whereas even Locke tends to put itself down low in order to get hooked reavers. But that largely depended on the presence of Naturalize to be able to deal with the early giants. Nowadays though, after the nerfs, Druid is just worse all around, so I feel like the even lock should be favored. Yeah, I, I think so because also with, with the with the nerfs to, to wild growth and nourish a while ago, Druid does more or less the same thing, just slower. Mm -hmm. And often you beat Warlock because by the time they got they were tapping a lot into those late turns, you were already pre you know getting ready to just mally goes and kill them. And, and that's not quite the case as much anymore. And Garibor are already Twilight Drake and a Mountain Giant on the coin as well means that he can get this pressure down pretty early. And I don't know about you, Gia, but I don't see a naturalize. Yeah, and Surrender's opening hand is quite bad. And because of that, as early as now, he's like, okay, I don't think I can go for the smart plan. He held back on the hero power to respect an eventual Hooked Reaver, which is something you did not used to do as Malagos Druid. At least I didn't do it. Yeah, sometimes you can actually just like swipe, swipe, face right. with a hero power from Malfurion and you've killed them mm -hmm. randomly. But I was going to say, there's always the turn three draw now because look, Wild Growth couldn't have been played anyway on turn two, so that hero power is not so bad. Yeah. But Frost is at least helping cycle and get to Malfurion, which again, the three damage hero power is insane. We don't see it as much right now, but that stacks up very quickly. Yeah. And Garibor going for the earlier Twilight Drake than Mountain Giant in order to respect exactly Naturalize. And Surrender is drawing good stuff off the right side. And uh, good for him because finally the hand looks like it's starting to piece itself into a curve, although Garibor will not be slowing down. Double Giant, yeah, we can respect one Naturalize. <laughs> <Look at Surrender's> but... <laughs> I love it. He's, the, he's one of the only people who can, like, amuse me whilst they're losing. Like, you know, that is not a good thing to happen to Surrender, but he's just, like, laughing and smiling about it anyway. <laughs> By his expressions, I was trying to judge whether he had drawn Naturalize <laughs> because I saw a bit of a smile there, but he does sometimes smile even when bad things are yeah, happening exactly. to him. So, unfortunate for him there, this could just be a stomp. This is the problem, right? So, not only is Twilight Drake going to start chipping away, not only is the giant going to start punching him in the face pretty hard, there's just another one. I, these draws would have to be insane. There, there you go, the, the side tilt. Now, that's too much for Surrender. He's not laughing anymore. Yeah. The second giant is when he goes too far. Already down to 21 health. There is a spreading plague, but even Locke's one of the few decks that, that aggressive style decks that doesn't really care about plague mm -hmm. because, okay, bang, 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 they're all dead. Let's move on. It really is just by a turn for Surrender here. And luckily for him, most of the time, even locks are just dropping Mossy Horror now. So this will prevent quite a bit of damage. But uh, Surrender is still two turns away from being able to get the Twig online. And he needs Twig. Yeah, that's just Oh, lethal. wait. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There is a... <laughs> that was it. Fire oh, God. Yeah, purely because of the, the Tyrant being on the board, the Hellfire set up the Defile to go yeah. one, two, three. And that was it. And... <laughs> You guys might have blinked and missed that one, but two 
uh, sorry, zero two down. Yeah. Can he fight back? And so I'm just saying, look, I got to win with this druid. Maybe third time's a charm. This but it's is gonna the be to against, do it. Yeah, it's, it's going to be an odd quest warrior this is, with a soul thief. Right, right. This is the hand to do it and the matchup, I guess, where he would have had not the easiest time, but an easier time. Um, it's kind of weird, though, because when you go up against the normal odd warrior as a Malagos druid, you feel bad because sometimes you just can't get there against their armor total. Against this warrior, though, they if they want to get their powerful hero power online, then they need to give up the armor gain. So it's a little bit awkward. But at the same time, that 8 damage every turn is very difficult for a Malagos druid to deal with. Right, and this is going to be the question mark and, and some of the weird interactions of bringing a, an archetype that isn't played too much isn't super common is so no, Karabor we'll could survive. just press his armor hero power every single turn and say you won't get enough damage to kill me. Mm -hmm. He could maybe have that confidence, but maybe a lack of being able to practice against much Mali Ghost Druid, because I'm not being funny, I wouldn't have particularly practiced against yeah. Mali Ghost Druid for this tournament. But I will say we saw the Blackwall Pixie in the opening hand that was tossed. Yeah. Uh, he wants two. So if I was surrender, as soon if the Ragnaros hero power comes online, I would be terrified because you can just take a million damage whilst you blink and he could die again. It's true. And one thing that was interesting is that Garibor kept the Azalina, which is not something I would think to do. I'm not really sure what he is preparing for with that kind of keep, but it sort of tells me that he's not really looking to get the quest online as soon as possible. I think he would rather armor up and maybe once he sees that Surrender's about to go for some crazy Malagos turn, maybe that's when he lets the Azalina rip so he can do something with those cards himself. Yeah, Dream Petal Florist, right. as soon as that card mm -hmm. comes down, you, you don't just throw that down and hope, right? Yeah. That you that goes down to buff something important in hand, mm -hmm. Malagos mainly, that will then proc it into a big combo, but Carabao just gonna spam the armor up and also a small note as well is not only can he gain a combo yeah. but as quest uh, odd quest warrior you want to play cards right you often you would like to play a taunt every single turn so therefore your hand size can actually get quite low sometimes so even as alina is a refill wouldn't be the end of the world it's true and it is very telling of what garabor is trying to do that he just hero powered on turn four rather than going for a minion. Right. And seeing oh. that, I feel like he just is going to hit the button again. Yeah, this is the true test. I mean, Tower Creep is definitely not bad, but what is Surrender going to play this turn? Maybe he wants to front load just in case an Alex is there? Maybe? And we can see that one is, so the Tower Creep is not a bad call because now he can just armor up again. The only slightly weird thing is well now if he armors up he also can't play one of his five drops Ooh, shield and, uh, flash <laughs> oh my goodness this is just not surrender's game or match doesn't seem like it <laughs> <laughs> okay he could still draw you i raven this is not over okay he's he i'll just say okay to that for, for ui on the following turn and then Ferocious. another five yeah. turns of Relentless damage to try and kill through the armor. Oh, I don't even know anymore. So branch and pass for the double draw, just to try and get something going. There's Floop. Yeah. Historically, for the Druid, this is a matchup where you needed to get some form of minion damage to compensate for all of the armor that the warrior has, because a lot of the time, even with your max Malagos combo, um, you can't get enough damage to get through everything. But getting the minion damage is really, really tough when your opponent just plays taunts all the time. So right. that really, really sucks. But for Surrender, I think what that is? in order to play the quest version of the warrior list, you, run, you cut the weapon removal. So for Surrender, he could possibly get the full oh, twig sure. plus Mali plus Dream Battle plus Floop, which is a lot of damage. It really we is. cannot count Surrender out yet. This is the scary thing, and it's, you know, it's conversations. We've had tons about Warrior, especially Warrior in playoffs. Mm -hmm. Never feels like it does that well overall. And we've seen a dip in just pure Odd Warrior being brought, like Odd Control. But for me, odd, the bonus of Odd Quest Warrior is you can choose to play defensive, but also you can just chain minions and just punch your opponent in the face if, if they don't really do anything about it. And Spreading Plague is, is about as defensive as it gets, but when you're playing defensive, against a deck that can either gain so much armor you can't kill them or can switch on potentially 16 plus damage a turn with that hero power and the pixies then there's something going wrong somewhere 
and for surrender to even get that dream game plan I talked about going, it's just not going to happen if your UIs are too far down because Druid relies so heavy, heavily on that for Let's their card see. draw engine, especially when you use Nourish for ramp as Surrender did. And that made sense with his hand at the time, but the draws following that just are not keeping up. Well, Savage working out whether he wants to play, say, Flamidus Flute, which is, as you can see, the Tyrant now, yeah. um, just for an extra body. But you do always have to consider Brawl because yeah. if Gar Garibor's ever that bothered about the board, because Let's be honest, Surrender can only make, what, two wide boards mm -hmm. uh, because of the, the spreading plagues, and that's pretty much it for yeah. minion pressure. Then Garibo has two brawls. So, you know, whenever he feels too threatened, he can just press the brawl, and then it's gone. He's only 10 cards into the deck, though, so there's still two thirds of his deck left, so she likely yeah. doesn't have it, and that hit. Hmm. Maybe I kill this <laughs> Grizzly at right. some point. I mean, I'll start now. I was thinking Surrender maybe was potentially considering Spellstone on the Tar Creeper and then hit again, but the Spellstone I think is probably close to full upgrading anyway. I'm not quite sure what the attack on particularly the Grizzly accomplishes, but he just didn't have much better of things to do and that draws. Oh, you can see it on his face. Yeah, what does but, he do here? You'd never want to swipe. Because... For those of you who may not know, may not be too familiar, the, the florist hitting floop doesn't really work. Right. When you play another minion, the floop resets to four mana again. Cause it's like fresh, so to speak. But I think the, the hit on the Grizzly was setting up this kind of turn for a kill mm -hmm. because the Tar Creeper is the least threatening minion on the board because on Garibald's turn, it's obviously not really hitting very hard. But th this is Surrender making the best of it, but he pretty much needs to draw a UI next turn to really gain the power because outside of UI, there's no single card that gets him back in the game. He needs UI to then draw more to create everything to go together to even have a chance. Yeah, at the very least, a nourish for more draw, but every turn that the UI isn't there, Garibor just gets another free four health. Surrender feels more pressure to use swipe to deal with this board state. And the swipe is minus nine damage right. in the long run because amount could be even minus 14 because of flu. And this is what I was saying earlier, like if you look now, the quest is six out of seven. And whenever Garibor decides, he can go, oh, well, there's an extra you know, 12 damage yeah. because of the swings of the weapon too. And you know, already he's ahead on board. Surrender doesn't really have an answer to these minions. He's gonna get hit for what? Say even five if, if the the, the Amali Warbear gets killed off. He hits for five, puts his opponent down to 24, and then there could just be another 12 this yeah, turn out of that. nowhere. It's rough. I think from Surrender's position, he just has to go with the twig here, possibly hit a 2-3 and maybe trade away the 4-1 into what? I'm not sure because Tar Creeper looks like the obvious one, but um, it's actually presenting less damage on Surrender's turns. Uh, oh, sorry, on Garibor's turns. <laughs> And uh, Surrender is going to pull the trigger on Innervate Naturalize now, which makes a lot of sense because he's locked into UI for the next turn. Does not want to overdraw anything. It's crucial that he gets to squeeze out every last bit of damage. And this is probably the tipping point of this game now because Garibald can prop the quest, turn up the heat if he oh, wants. Pixie. Or he can keep going for armor. And yeah. if I was Garibald personally, I would just go quest and be like, right, now you have to not only draw the cards to try and get through all this health. You also have to not die. Yeah. And doing two things like that in at the same time in any game of Hearthstone is pretty hard. He's taking a minute to decide. He looks almost pained, Garibor. Yeah. But this is high pressure, right? It's 2-0, first playoffs, 2-0. If he beats Surrender in this game, he goes 3-0, which is a fantastic start to the tournament. It gives you so much more sort of may maybe even relaxation as you move towards the later stage. I mean, what a confidence booster to be able to prove to yourself and to everybody watching that on your first playoffs, even as a challenger, you have what it takes to go up against someone like Surrender. And Garibor, I don't blame him for feeling the pressure even in such a strong position. And he is just going to go in. And I, and love I it. think that's the play. Yeah, I love it because absolutely. look at this, right? With Pixie, there's 20 damage from hand without the minions. <laughs> Yeah. Surrender's only on 12. <laughs> like, there's so much damage you can put out. This UI is as good as it's ever going to get for Surrender. But Mind you, he may even, good even enough. have to expend a Moonfire just to not possibly overdraw Malagos. And that's even less damage he can deal. If he even survives, 
Oh, poor surrender. Make a little, little face. I thought I was the most biased caster raven, but... <laughs> no one surrenders on screen. Let's see. You should tell me in the back room when surrenders on screen. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to sound completely sensible. But so from... this is just tough. There's just... No... Again, the problem here is now surrender has to do two major things at the same time. Oh. And he can't. Yeah. And I was thinking he either had to expend Moonfire or the fluke Arcane Tyrant there just so he wouldn't overdraw, but he says, I need all of those pieces to be able to get like through the arm. Yeah, anyway, and yeah, even though he's dead here, I don't blame him for that play, because even though there's a 1-5 to overdraw Malagos, if he does, if he uses any of those pieces, he's never getting there anyway. I don't even know what to say about this match. It Already today, we've had a, a flurry of three zeros, at least on stream, 